You're listening to the Black Minds Matters podcast in association with WCEN. Hey, hey, what's good? My name is Peaks and you are listening to the Black Minds Matters podcast in association with WCEN. I'm also joined with Mr. X. What's good? How are you today, Mr. X? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. And I hope you all are too. Again, the sun is shining, which is lovely. But um, yes, we are doing this Black Minds Matters podcast. The reason being, we want to make sure that the spirits are raised of everybody just now because of this global pandemic that we're going through. We want to have a diverse young voices here that are currently not really being heard because there's not many platforms to discuss these types of things. So again, this platform is for any young people. You can be a musician, an artist, a poet, Um, people who are in the healthcare profession, if you're a parent, a student, even if you're seeking employment at this point in time, it doesn't matter who you are, everybody's involved in this and this is your platform to share your stories and experiences. So on today's podcast show, we have an artist by the name of Ed Akura. He's born in London, raised in the UK and Ghana. He's a British rapper, host of In The Deep podcast, a songwriter, a screenwriter, and a producer of an exciting new documentary film called Blacks Can't Swim. We're going to chat to him now. So are you there, Ed? Here I am. Here Love you are. Friend. What's yep. good? What's good? What's good? How's it over there? Is it sunny, yeah? It's all sunny. It's stuck indoors. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's kind of weird because usually when it's sunny, I'm out there gallivanting, doing my thing. But now I'm just watching it from the window yeah I, have my, I, I usually have, i usually have my one my one day sorry my one um my one Hour. walk a day oh. um run about in the afternoon so um i'm just saving it up hopefully it will still be something by then so that i can just go out there and do a half an hour walk <laughs> you can split up my... into two halves yeah. <laughs> and a half hour here and a half hour there <laughs> All right, so basically, um, we just want to get a bit of insight into who Ed is. So if you can give us up until the present moment, you know, before all this kind of stuff happened, mm. um, who you are, what's your kind of background, your heritage, and then we'll go into, you know, what projects you're working on up until, you know, before lockdown. Okay, okay. I'm originally from Ghana. And I'll, and I'll give you, I'll, and it's, it's going to be relative to the project I'm working on right now. So please bear with me. Um, I was born in this country, born in the UK, went to Ghana when I was nine years old. No, I think I was about eight or nine years old. And I lived there till I was about 18. So I had my secondary education and everything in Ghana and came back um, yeah, when I was around about 18. Um, I can't really remember much um, leading up to me coming to going to Ghana all I know is that uh, my parents had been going on a holiday and I had everything packed and the next thing I knew I was in Ghana um <laughs> and not really a, bad a thing. very long holiday I was there for nine yeah yeah, nine, very long years. Holiday. yeah so I came back I came back to my I came back to my, my uh I had my second education there I came back to university when I was in, in the UK and I've been here ever since um um, yeah, so basically, I am a musician, I'm a rapper of sorts, and um, some call me an incidental filmmaker, um, um, or shall I say accidental filmmaker, because <laughs> it happened by accident. I've made one film, and um, yeah, and basically... Um, there's a number of reasons that made that happen. And I went to, um, I was going to Tottenham because my mum lives in Tottenham. So on my way to Tottenham, I, st- I stopped by Wood Green and see if I can find it. There's a river island there. So I walked past um, McDonald's, went to Water River Island. Then something happened. I saw a gentleman sitting there, um, in, in, in uh, a homeless gentleman. And Usually, if I was in that situation, I would just throw a couple of pounds, or you know, just whatever I have, or just where still just walk on by. But there was something that drew me to this gentleman, so I went over there and I had a conversation with him. 
And um, we chatted for about five, ten minutes, and he said his name was Chris, and he said he'd been on the street for the past, I think, three, four years, if I remember correctly. Um, he said he used to work in office. He had a job, he had a wife, he had a house and everything. And um, things, I think his best friend had an affair with his wife or something like that, mm. and that he couldn't take it. It threw him, so he started drinking, started there, yeah, and then one thing left him that uh, he lost his job, lost his house, and he ended up on the street. So I asked him, I said, I've got to get something for my daughter. Do you want something? He goes, yes. Yeah. So I got him something, and I came out, gave it to him, and I stood there beside him. And this was around about, I think it was around about this November, December, yeah, early December, late November. So we started having a chat, and I said to him, I hope the new year finds you well, and I hope you find your feet, and I wish you all the best. So, yeah, so left and went... The next time I was in Wood Green, I said, let me just pass by and see if I can see Chris, see, you know, see how he's doing. So I got there and I, I couldn't see him. I go, oh, that's good. At least maybe he's, you know, hopefully there's a chance that he maybe he's found his feet and, you know, he's now off the street. But um, when he was sitting there's a shop there. So I asked the gentleman, I described him. I said, have you seen this guy? You know, Chris, you know, like I described him. And he go, oh, unfortunately he passed away. Oh, gosh. Yeah. yeah. I go, Wow. Wow. Okay, that kind of hit me. What kind of age group was he? He was probably about. 30. It's hard to say. You know, when you're looking at this, he looked about. He looked about forties, but he could have been. He could have easily been in his thirties. Yeah. Yeah, because you know people age. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So I spoke. So yeah. So so I said, wow. Okay. And so that I came home. And it had, a, like I say, it had an effect on me. I was like, mm, okay. And I was in the writing mood at that time. So I decided to write a song. And the song was a song called Bear a Witness. And so the song is an you know, R&B based song talking about homelessness. Um, and basically, basically experience, I, I you know, that my experience with, with this gentleman. So I did the song and I put it out there put it out as a single, and I just carried on life, as you do. But then um, a few months later, a couple of months, well, not, I'll tell you, about five, six months later, I had two messages, one from a gentleman in in the U.S., somebody in the U.S., and one was from France. And basically they said they've heard the song, because I had it on iTunes, and they said they heard the song, and as a result of listening to the song, they have started acknowledging um, homeless people wow. and I go wow okay so I said okay I think I need to make a vi- I, may, I need to make a video for this song because at that point there was no video so I called I called this award-winning uh, musical <laughs> director um, <laughs> um Mr. Rex. Wow. it is called it's called Mr. Rex I, I'm, I don't know if you've heard of him <laughs> but yeah Mr. Rex the one who's sitting to <laughs> Joker. here with me right now <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what a coincidence! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I called him. I said, "Let's make a video. Let's make a f- uh, yeah." So we did the video, and that went very, very well. And I was a, as a result, I started a campaign called um, the Bear Witness com- campaign. And the campaign was basically: if you see a homeless person, you don't oh, you um, just show an act of kindness, even if it's just a smile. Mm. You know, um, even if it's just a smile, that makes such a difference. And so if you've did, got something to give, yeah. Yeah, and, I was going to say for the video, did you like what was the um, what was the process of it? Because um, how did you think? Okay, how do I attack this? Because you've you had the song, and obviously it was affected by people in different countries. Thought, oh, we don't we want to acknowledge homeless people and stuff. So, yeah, what was yeah. your process for the video to make sure that the kind of message hit home for other people? So um, I worked. I worked closely with um, uh, with the director on it, and basically we came up with an idea of me being obviously two two sets of people: me performing the song, uh, from vocally performing the song, mm-hmm. and me also acting as a homeless person. Right. So basically, um, I sat. Um, so so we did a performance. Um, then we sat. Then the director sat me down. In a, in, a, in a closed dress as if I was a homeless person and I had a sign there um, asking people to you know help where they can and what I um, and 
I don't know if the director remembers this, but at one point he went away to get some camera or something like that. And so that um, I was I was by myself for a few minutes, probably about probably about ten minutes, ten fifteen minutes. <laughs> I remember this actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the what I acknowledged were there were three kinds of people. I noticed the three kind of people that were walking past. This was the high. Uh, this was Dalton High Street. So there's a lot of people Saturday morning. A lot of people walking. Saturday or Sunday. So at walking. this point, yeah, just to interject so people understand. At this point, when I went to 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 get the camera and I left you by yourself and went whilst he was waiting for me, he was at this point dressed as a homeless person. Yes, dressed and sitting down in front of a on a, a cardboard box as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, in a cardboard box. So the whole yeah. scene was set and people walking past believed that at that point you was a homeless that, person. That, that was whole, uh, okay. You can um, <laughs> and I acknowledged, and, and so I basically, like I said, there were three, there were three that kind of people that walked past. One group of people that looked at me, and this is ten percent of people, probably about ten percent of people that looked at me in disgust, like, "Bum, sort yourself out." Um, another ten percent of people that looked at me like, um, "Oh, feeling sorry for me," and, and gave me some money and ten, uh, what do you call it? Well, I've got a couple of ten, pay, ten p's, fifty p a pound, whatever. So that was another ten percent. But a majority of the people, and which I should say, I am about eighty percent of the people did not even see me. So I was not even there. They were just carrying on, and um, and um, um, without even even noticing me. And that gave me the idea to start the campaign. You know, when you see him, yeah. mm-hmm. I'm not going to leave it there. But um, as, as I, I take it, was the documentary um, the first film that you that you participated that you created? Or had it's, you yeah, done anything it, before? It, it was a it was a music video documentary. Yes, and it was that was the first one. Of okay, so that was yeah. your your first experience making making uh, film it, documentary. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. So and um, so basically, you inspired to write this um, um, this film two years ago, um, yep. which is what is currently out and about to be re-released as well. Yep, so yep. tell us the thinking behind why you wrote the film and um, in not so much detail, but in as much detail as you can, basically, because obviously we don't want to go on too, too long and stuff, how you came about to write this film and how you went about producing it. Okay. I'll give you the short version of this. Yeah. Okay. So starting with the title. <laughs> <laughs> a film called Blacks Can't Swim. That's how, that's, um, yeah. But basically, this is how it started. 2018, August, Barbados. I was in, on, I, was, I was on holiday with my, my wife, my daughter, and a few friends, probably about 12, 13 of us. And um, two of them are Bajan. Um, two of them are actually in the film. Um, so basically, we were on a, we were on a, we were on a, we were a catamaran, um, a nice hot day. And as you get onto the catamaran, they give you a life jacket. I sat, so I, I had a life jacket on. And people were just, you know, chilling, having a drink and all that kind of stuff. Then one of my friends, Safina, um, she said to me, um, oh, let me take a picture of you in your life jacket because you look so cool in it. You could use it on your next album cover. And I said to myself, album cover, I, uh, why would I uh, have a picture of me wearing a life jacket and an album cover? Unless, of course, the song was something to do about swimming. But at, this, at that time, because obviously I acknowledge that I can't swim, and then I've never learned how to swim. And so I said, okay, so let me just start writing the song. That's, that's how this idea to together a song did and you actually write it whilst you were on holiday <laughs> i wrote i wrote it and recorded it whilst i was on holiday oh, wow <laughs> so yeah so i come back okay for fast forward come back um record i recorded the song it's a tongue-in-cheek song about you know me swimming and not me not swimming and my fears and all that kind of thing i put the song out there then within a week i get a call from a message from an organization called swimming nature and swimming nature are an elitist um swimming school based in london been around for over 20 years and they teach the the the, the, the elite swimmers um how to swim and all using on a one-on-one basis mm. and he said we want to teach you how to swim we've heard your song and we want to teach you how to swim and we'll teach you how to swim for free even better <laughs> and i go okay 
and they used to be charged about a thousand pounds on intensive lesson or lesson yeah but we'll do it for free as long as you let us document it and i go okay so um why do you want to teach me how to swim? Well, why do you want? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm intrigued. Why? And he said because they they were aware of the issue with blacks, the issue with blacks not swimming, the fears of blacks to swim and all that kind of thing. But because they are a white middle class organisation, there's no way they can start having a conversation about it because of the racial implication. Mm. So they have steered away from this topic all their most of their life. But since I as a black man is talking about it, they want to be a part of it. So, okay, fair enough. Run about the same time, one of my friends, Carl, Carl says, why don't we make that film? You know that film that you're talking about, someone should make, make a film called Black Scams, and why don't we make that film? And I go, um, I don't know how to make a film, <laughs> but I know a man who does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I called this award-winning film director. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and then then the rest is history. I don't know how much more detail you want me to put in the film. Um, no, that's amazing. Yeah. Because nah, it built up so much dialogue, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, um, now we're yeah. going to f- fast forward um, now. Before this lockdown, mm-hmm. he was a filmmaker. And is that what you do? Or do you do anything else for a living as well? Is it just... Oh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, I work for... an. Um, an IT company based in the US, which manufactures data storage. So, oh, wow. so I'm, I'm, I'm a partner, a partner, um, shall I say, partner manager and salesperson for this um, IT company called IX Systems. And then basically, they, they sell data storage oh, okay. for enterprise solutions. Yeah, are you, so are you still doing that? Are you, have you, have you still... oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, I'm still working. Yeah. Okay, so you're one of yeah. the very you're lucky one the ones. People that can that yeah. can still carry on working okay so tell yeah, us for, so for now yeah. so, oh for now okay yeah absolutely so um so tell us how have you managed to to adjust for um having been a filmmaker and can you tell us just the before and after um effects to your filmmaking process uh, has it changed anything what was you doing just before it locked down to now when it's all locked down and tell us any changes that may have occurred regarding your filmmaking and your work um, last week we shot the pilot and it was a 30 minute film um, um, we were just putting it out there to see how to see and, and actually never expected it to go this far but that's another story um, so yeah so basically we put the we, 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 it was a story of my life my journey because I never I could never swim and 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 the, the, how the film started my, my, my mom's telling me that swimming is um, I, can, I can learn how to swim at any age. My, what I should concentrate is my books, my studies. That's my priority. We don't have a swimming pool. We don't live near the sea. Why do you want to learn how to swim? So basically, the whole idea was me to put it out there to encourage people to, um, because there's a, the, the, there's a water safety element. Apart from swimming, the most important thing is the water safety. And there's a lot, so water safety is very, very important. So the whole idea of the film is to encourage more black people to swim, to, t- and to, to kill the reception. So basically change the perception to um, and the, uh, the stereotypes, the stigmas and the myths to get rid of them and get people swimming. And if, even if not for pleasure, for your life, because it's, it's a life skill. And the, one of the reasons what made me decide to learn how to swim myself, because I'm now learning how to swim, is my, is my daughter. Because I, I said to myself, if, my, if I was ever in a situation where my daughter fell in the water and I couldn't help her, I don't think I'll ever be able to forgive myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that is one the reason why I'm learning how to swim. Um, so we did the, so we did the film and put it out there. But the reception was amazing because I didn't expect that kind of reception from this. Yeah, like then, everybody's the perception was amazing. I was even yeah, shocked myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and, it's, and the thing is that it's still. I mean, I've had um, and um, um, Nike, Nike Swim, um, uh, Speedo are all endorsing it. Um, the Swim England, STA, all the swimming governing bodies and everything, they all, everybody wants, everybody wants to be, because it's the first, it's, it's a, and a lot of people have done documentaries, um, and done, run articles on, on black people and swimming and the issues and all that kind of thing. But I think what makes this one very, very different, and this is what was said by Craig Lord, who is a Times editor. He said that, what makes this one very, very different is, is the everyday people, general people, they're not swimmers, 
They're not swimming professionals. They're just everyday people in the community talking about their personal um, experiences with swimming. And, and, and a lot of people relate to that. Um, so, yeah, so basically, um, since we launched it in February, we launched, we launched the pilot in February last year, up until now, things have taken a turn. And we decided to let the film, because I on a daily basis, I get at least about two or three emails every single day from people all over the world saying, I want to watch this film. Where can I find it? I want to watch this film. Where can I find it? So I decided to find a distributor and have the film um, distributed globally. But the problem I had was it was a short film and it needed to be a feature film. So therefore, I called on this award-winning film director. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of calls going to him. (laughs) How do we do this? So we, we decided to shoot some additional scenes. Um, and in, involving the younger generation, because I think that was what we were missing in the, in the original pilot. We need to have some younger generation there so to, 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 to understand their viewpoint of it, to understand what their their thoughts of it, and how whether they find it important or not. That kind of thing. So we decided to shoot some scenes. Yeah, we shot the last scene just before the lockdown, so that was perfect. Because other than that, the film would have not been able to be have been completed. So. So um, I'm just using this time um, to, what do you call it, to me just make sure everything is ready. Um, the film's been filmed, the film's been edited, um, completed by this award-winning director, and um, it's it's. Um, thank you very much, no Mr. Rex. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> and so yes, it's almost ready to go. But the, the importance is that um, we're all locked down now, and everybody's stuck indoors. And everyone is stuck, and you know, and at some point we're going to be set free, right, to go out and do what we want one day soon. And if by that time we still have some sun, the summer is still there, what are people going to do? A lot of people are going to go and try and go on holidays. A lot of people are going to go in the water, beaches, and other kind of thing. So what I'm trying to encourage people to do right now through the film and through um, other means, tweets and things, is that water safety. Water safety is a very, very important so important factor. So and even more important than swimming. So that when you go to a pool, when you go to a beach, there's a, f- a few basic, very, 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 very basic things you, you, know, you have to acknowledge. Like, for instance, when you go to a swimming pool, and, and I'll give you the two main ones. When you go to a swimming pool, most people just get ready, get, get stuff out, and just jump in. But first thing you need to check is find out if there's a lifeguard. Mm. If, if, if there's no lifeguard, what do I do in case of emergency? You know, things like that, very basic things yes. like so that. You, and I've had, gonna... this, I've had this conversation with swimmers. I've had this conversation with professional swimmers, and they say, wow, yes, we just take it for granted, we just jump in. And and things like that. And, and the second most important one is do not, if you see somebody in difficulty, do not jump in unless of course you really have to make as much noise as you can bang things together crash things and get as many people in, but do not jump in because otherwise you know it, it's a person that you're going to say dead weight that person's going to drag you down and there's a few one or two other things yeah so basically that's what i've been doing you know i'm using the lockdown time to engage with people that are still available and like there's um, swimming England, the swimming teachers association and put together programs put together and um, and things like that and and, that, and 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 this could have led to another story about the bsa but i'm taking we can use it that's, that's gonna have to be another day i'll tell um, us briefly what the bsa time. is okay so the bsa is a is the black swimming association long story short swim england said there's a big issue with swimming in the, in the blacks and ethnic minorities in the UK. We all know that. And the figure still states that 80% of black um, adults don't swim. No, sorry, 80% of black children don't swim and 90, 95% of black adults mm-hmm. don't swim. And that's fact. Got the, those, that's the list of figures. Swim England said they have tried, they've tried to try and try to get into the black community, but they have failed. So can we help them? So we said yes. So we sat down, put together a plan, 
I mean, also got all the other government bodies involved, which is Swimming Teachers Association, the Royal Life Saving Society, and everyone. And then we came up with an organization by the name of Black Swimming Association. And with the organization, it's to educate the Black community of water safety, life saving, and drowning prevention. And, and use it as a collaborative um, platform for swimming charities and governing bodies just to come together and save the community. And we launched this organization on March the 2nd. If there's um, three tips on water safety that you think for young people to, to really think about what once, you know, if they do start going on holiday and they do want to take up the sport, where's, uh, what's your top three tips for getting started and for taking water safety into account? It could even be for families as well who have got young children introducing them. Well, three tips. Three tips, I would say, like I said, um, firstly, make sure, find out if there's a lifeguard around. And if there is... If there, if there isn't, find out what um, all kind of um, water safety measures. Some 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 um, swimming pools, some beaches have whistles, so you have a whistle around your neck, and if you're in trouble, you blow your whistle. So find out what the what the procedure is for that particular um, swimming um, park place you are at. That's the first thing. Second second thing is don't drink and swim. So if you say, and, and, and a lot of drownings are due to people being drunk, at the t- not even drunk, being slightly tipsy before going into the water. And especially when alcohol, and I don't drink, but I know that if, you're dr- if you drink and, and the heat, it hits you, it puts you, you know, you, 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 you kind of lose control. So do not, if you've drunk anything, if, if you've, you know, just stay away from yeah. the water. Was that, was that number three? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Number three, always go swimming with someone else. If you're just learning. Never go swimming yeah. on your own. Never go swimming on your own. Always have somebody with you. Um, your perspective of life now, based on what we've seen happening um, in the, over the last six weeks, basically, you, was, you still are this budding filmmaker, um, very <laughs> creative, very ha- hard working, driven, passionate and stuff. But as this... What we see in this world, does that change your perspective of things? Are you still the same person or are you looking at the world, that life, slightly bit differently now? I think we all look, we all look at the world um, in a slightly different way. I mean, it's hard not to. I mean, I mean once, once we come out of this lockdown, everything is going to change from, from, what, from, from my perspective. Everything is going to change. I mean, communication is different. I mean, I, I went... I went to Tesco the other day, and uh, what do you call it? I, I tried my best not to go. Since the lockdown, I've only been shopping three times to try and get everything. We walked in there, and everybody's looking at everybody with, 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 with a hint of suspicion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> everybody's saying that. Everybody's saying that. Now we're all kind of looking at each other a bit weird now. It's like a, 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 a funny thing. I'm oh, sorry to, to interrupt you. Someone said back in the day, basically, back in the day, when you farted, you covered up with a cough. Now, if you cough, yeah, you yeah, cover yeah, it up yeah, with yeah. a fart now. But yeah, carry on. Yes, yeah, 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 you're so in Tesco. Yeah, so, 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 so it's, 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 so it's changed. Like, it's like, like, for instance, handshake. That's, I think that's going to be a thing of the past. Um, and you know, basic things like that. So, and it goes to show how vulnerable we are. You know, all of a sudden, we're in, we're, we are all in a situation whereby we are at the mercy of um and look look how many people have been furloughed how many organizations have already let people go and and and, and once we come out of this furlough where the government is paying you know 80 percent of the of the wages a lot of people are going to be let go let, let go because organizations have been dormant and all of a sudden if the money stops coming in and they have not been working for the past two, three months. Where they, they're not going to, the companies are not going to be able to afford anything, so they're going to have to be, let people go. So we're all very vulnerable at this point, and so it just makes me, um, from my personal point of view, it just makes me think that if you've got something to do, just do it. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you've got something to do, don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait till next year. Don't wait till next year. Oh, that project I'll start doing just next year. Just do it year. now. Who knows what has, what's going to happen yeah, next year? Yeah, just, just do, do it. it. And 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 that's and that's my that's and that's my my that's where I work anyway. And um, going back to the BSA, the girls in the BSA, they're always like, "Kids, we can't keep up with you. You need to slow down a bit." I said, "Listen, 
you can slow down if you want to. I'm, I've got things to do. I'm going. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. If I've got, yeah. And, and Mr. X, you know, you know, you know, but when I've got something, then I've got a demon, but I just want to do it. I want to do it, do it, do it, do it. And then I'll get to where I want to get and start the next one. So, yeah, I think that's what people need to do. You've got things to do, you know, just do it. Because, hey, who knows what's going to happen absolutely, tomorrow? Absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, we're going to just leave it now, basically. But before you go, um, if you can leave us some of your links. Um, where, where can people find out more about your filmmaking, especially, obviously, with your current film, Blacks it, Can't Swim? Film, yeah, blackscanswim.com. Go to blackscanswim.com. Um, um, yeah, that you see the, all the articles on there. Or even if you just go to Google and type in a film called Blacks Can't Swim, there's a huge amount of document and um, um, uh, media press and things like that on there and um, also based on swimming the bsa.co.uk and um, just get get involved get involved with us um if, if, if you swim you don't swim everyone's got a story everyone's got to you know you know talk to us that's it and um yeah and um and you already gave us the um the homeless one earlier as well but we will definitely yeah. leave all the yeah. links in the information box below thank you so much for for sharing your time with us and hopefully you'll get out there and get a wee bit more of that lovely weather as you said but yeah thank you you've very shared much yeah. so much with us um, it's, on, been, yeah. it's, it's been a pleasure it's been a real pleasure really and, and we'll definitely have to get you back for the the launch when the launch of um the blacks can't swim because yeah as i said you know a few of the young people from black minds matters has been involved in the project yeah. as well and there's so many yeah. other people in there so definitely when it gets launched we'll have to have you back and celebrate <laughs> all right yeah. so all for the real, best with those projects real. thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day and you too Thanks, thank Ed. you very much bye bye Cheers. bye so thank you so much. That was Ed. There was a load of information on there. So don't forget, we will leave all the information in the, the dialogue box below. If you want to share any of your tips or experiences, then please leave it in the comments or you can contact us on info at blackmindsmatters.co.uk. Also, you can go and check out the website where there is um, videos, um, information, and also you can sign up to the newsletter, which is on blackmindsmatters.co.uk. If you want to find out the latest government and healthcare guidelines for up-to-date information, then please go and visit www.gov.uk or check out www.wandsworth.gov.uk. Thank you so much. If you found value in this, share it with somebody else. Like and subscribe so you don't miss the next podcast show. We will catch you guys soon. Please be safe, be blessed, and we'll catch you later. Have a good day. You're listening to the Black Minds Matters podcast in association with WCEN.